Wow, it's Wolsey. Welcome back to Geometry Dash. We are back. We are going to open our new level with my description that we just made last time with a bunch of stuff that I ended up deleting, but at least we have this. We're just going to keep using this. As we make our way through the guide, we are currently on page 21 or 20, according to the bottom of the page. Deleting objects. If you place the wrong object, you might want to delete it. We're just going to keep working on through. None is just default. Static is only solid blocks. Details is other types of objects like decorations. And custom makes it so only the selected object in this box can be deleted. So say we have a bunch of objects here. We can swipe them all like this, and then we can go into the delete button with none, and it'll delete them all. So let's say we have a ton of objects. We have these pink squares, and we have the regular blocks. If we select all, and we go to press none, it will delete everything. If we press static, it will delete the solid blocks. Details will delete the non-solid blocks, and then we have custom. So say I have a different type of detail in here, like the stars gonna make these a different color like I don't know do I have anything set up here why are my colors in the level so terrible number six we'll make these yellow so you can tell if we put these in the custom delete and then select all of these objects and just click the custom that's not the delete button this is the delete button they're all gone now let's move on to the more advanced ones there's also the all button on the left which deletes every single instance of the object in the level that's pretty self-explanatory. Then there's a button to delete all start pause triggers, which is really nice for play testing. Then we have the four middle buttons marked. I have no idea what they're going to do. So this is the probably the first thing I'm actually going to be learning from the 2.2 editor in this series, which is cool. The top left one lets you find a specific group. Okay. The two buttons to the right are the group ID and color channel filters, respectively. Writing one in either means you can only delete objects with group ID number one or color channel ID number one in the delete tab. The bottom left trash can is a quick way of resetting all of these filters. That should have a different texture in my opinion to the other bin because that's just confusing, but it's okay. Okay, so here we have group number one. Then we can have group ID number two, which is these. Let's just put those on that group. And then what happens here? So pressing this, find group ID number two. Whoa! And I guess number one will just ping one of these objects. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. It actually pings it in green. So good thing I placed different types of objects because now you can see this is in green and it's selected, which is cool. So if you had specific things with specific IDs, then you can find it really quickly. I like that. Then we can group ID filter number one and that would probably just delete number one. Oh, that's cool. So then I can change it to two, delete the right hand ones. That's neat. And if I press this one, it goes back to zero. Great. Love it. Learned already. Okay. Let's put these blocks on color channel number six. Then we can put like half of them on number five or something like that. So now if I go into delete and I change color filter to five and select them all delete. Lovely. That was great. We, we actually barreled through all of that super easily. There are many buttons left in the interface that we have not touched on yet, but are summarized here. Okay. So the top left have the undo and redo buttons. Not all actions can be undone. That's true. Applying color channels and group IDs. This is not intuitive at all, but it's a thing that you get used to when you build. So check this out. If I place a square here that's on color channel number five, and I place a square here that's on color channel number six, if I change this to five, and then undo, it doesn't change the color back to the number six, which is kind of annoying. Same with groups. If I had a group here, number three, you press back, you go back into it, three is still there. It doesn't do that. Then we have playtesting buttons marked in yellow, which are these ones. Top one playtests the music, and the lower one playtests the level. Okay, so this one is playing the music only, and this one is playing the level. Fantastic. Then we have buttons for zooming in and out, okay. Then we have optional buttons that are enabled from the special options labeled as link controls, okay. I currently have these enabled. So if I place an object like this and I link, I can then just click anywhere and it will select the whole thing instead of just selecting an object. And the way you turn this on is you press pause, you go into the editor options and it's right here in the bottom left, enable link controls. Then we have the scroll bar, which basically just zooms you all the way through the level. That's nice. You can also move by swiping in a given direction. To the right of this slider in the top right, we have the start level settings 
as well as the pause menu. These are going to be covered later. Okay, we're going in chronological order, so we're just going to leave that for later. Resume goes back in, save and play plays, save and exit, saves and exits, well, it's kind of obvious. Save just saves within the editor. Yeah, okay, moving on. We have numerous buttons inside the red and blue boxes on the right. This is an edited picture, it's not actually that wide, that would be gross. Copy, paste, and copy and paste all do similar actions, which is making a new copy. If you wish to copy something from one spot in the editor to somewhere far away, the copy... Oh, I... Why have I never used that? Why have I never used that? Okay, let me show you. So I have some text that says hi here, right? If I want to copy paste that, I can just copy paste and then move just like this and just put it over here. But if I want to use that later on in the level, I press copy and I just move all the way over and I paste and it's right there. Oh, why have I never done that? I'm actually so stupid. Okay, you can just free move and snap that back onto grid because I don't think it knows how to properly put itself onto grid sometimes. That's the best way to do it. Nice, goodbye, instead of hi. It works across levels, I didn't know that. Copy values, copies group IDs and color channels, allowing you to paste them onto other objects. Paste state does both, paste color only pastes color. Okay, we're gonna write swag in some terrible font. Okay, so I have this written in, let's just say color channel number five. If I copy the values of this, and I'm trying to write like lol in some other color, and I'm like, hey, I want it to be the same as that. I just paste the color like so, nice. But say if I have something that's on group number two, for example, swag, uh, we're kind of skipping ahead. We're just gonna say that this is half of 25% opacity, just for an example. If I copy the values here, and then I write, I don't know, hi again in some other text, pasting the color won't paste that opacity. Pasting the state will paste the group, which has the opacity on it to make it that. So, so if I just remove all of this and I put it back to pink, if I paste the state, it will merely just paste the group instead of the color as well, and that stays as pink while having that opacity. So I could do both, make it the same, or I could just use the separate buttons like paste state and paste color for a nice little lick. Nice. Edit special and edit group have a lot of functionality and they're covered in later chapters. Okay. Edit object was covered earlier. Nice. And the button with the three colored circles gives you quick access to the HSV menu. Yippee! So if I select this, or merely just select one object here, I can change the whole HSV of it, which lets me change it and visually see the color changing in the editor, which is really nice. Make that a light blue. This button seems to change from HSV to the color button. I'm not sure if that's a glitch or not, but you can see it kind of freaking out. It is the HSV menu, and then obviously you can just deselect at any time. The other thing the editor guide covers for this section is say if I have this on a different editor layer, which is a concept of splitting the level into different sections. So say I can only select the U, or I can only select the SP because they're on different layers. If I go on all and I'm like, oh, where is the U? I can just click on it and press go to layer and it will move me to editor layer one, which is really useful because you might end up using like 20, 30 of these just to split up all of your decoration and then be like, uh, I don't know where this is, please help me. You can just go boom. So these pink arrows move the layer by one, as you can see, and this one moves it to all, which is really cool. I'm also gonna cover this section, picking song, starting song. We've already done this, but we're just gonna go into a bit more detail because it explains how Newgrounds works. So Newgrounds is a giant website that is integrated into Geometry Dash. You can see I have like a favorites tab here with some people I really like to keep a little bit of an eye on. I can go to the audio tab and there's a bunch of stuff here that you can use in your life levels, provided that they actually have it enabled for Geometry Dash. So say I want to use this Mr. Cool Tricks song, you can see in the bookmark bar that there is a link with a number next to it. If you copy this number right here, so I'm back, and I just paste that number into this tab, search, and I can download the song. While that's downloading, I'll mention the fact that there's a music library in the game right now with a bunch of stuff that Rob has added to the game. So you can look at different artists that are on here. They're all categorized into a nice list. I don't know why it's not letting me scroll. Hello. It would be real nice if I could scroll. <laughs> Eric Bowser, yo. My game just crashed. Eric Bowser, are you kidding me? Why did you do that to me? There was no need. Okay, this song is downloaded now. We can use this instead, which is neat. If I just press this button, it should play this song. You can hear it playing right now. So going back into the music library, 
Um, you can search for different people like this, which Rob Top's kind of selected to go into the game. Say I want to go into Stephen McDonald. If I tick that and then go through here, these are all by Stephen McDonald. And say I want to have Catalyst. Let's just listen to this. Boom. We have like some sci-fi action music. You can see they're all tagged here. Horror, action, hybrid. And it has like a little bar here. You can check through the song. This is such a cool interface. I didn't even know this existed. Then you can click on here. There is a start offset. So I can change this to start 30 seconds of the way in with this Mr. Cool Trick song, which is neat. And you can make it fade in and fade out. So when you start the level, it's not like a really abrupt start or end. It's fading in and then right here it will fade out as the level ends. Need to stop saying nice after everything. That would be awesome. And you can find them through the saved button, which is in the bottom right. And that shows you everything you've ever downloaded, especially on the servers too, which is cool. And we have the song settings that I've just went through. You can go up to three decimals now. I actually didn't know you could do that much. It's extremely precise. And then we have the guideline creator. To help you sync the gameplay and visuals of your level to your song, you can click the create lines in the bottom left. So you can just click to the song and it'll create lines in the editor so you can create a guide for making pulses and stuff for good music sync in the level. So I have sticker brush symphony. If I want to create lines for this song, I just press this button and I press record. Just click to the song and then I stop and I just check out the level right now. I have to make sure that this is enabled, otherwise they won't show. Now I have sync right here that I can just look at. Ba -ba -ba. Ba, 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 ba. Nice. So then I could just create like little background flashes or whatever in time. I could probably put like little jumps here that I need to sync. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Nice. See how helpful it is? It's super cool. These settings are all for the starting song. However, the editor lets you change the song further in. You can change the speed or edit the volume based on the proximity. So there are chapters for doing this. So I'm just going to read over this for now. I see the gameplay is in the next section. So we're just going to stop here for now. The guideline creator is not as helpful anymore. <laughs> Down. You can use the BPM finder with each song's details. Click more next to a song and then BPM to find its menu. What? It finds the BPM for you and does not draw the guidelines automatically. What? Wait, BPM. Oh my goodness. BPM. Find the BPM of a song. Tap to the beat. Recording starts on first tap. Oh my goodness. That's insane. It's just calculated 91 for me. So then what do I do with that 91? Practice a menu? You need a music customizer to change practice. And I should probably buy that. And I will, I can't put it on the menu either. <laughs> That's uh, so you can change your default practice song, I'm guessing, and the menu song. I did not realize that. Okay. So then can I go into the guidelines, clear these, and then just keep this BPM thing? How do I enable it? I want to see it on the screen. Afterwards, you can use BPM guide trigger together with the song's placement to create guidelines. Okay. So then if I have BPM guide, where is that? I've never even seen that before. BPM. <gasps> Yo. So I can just put 91 BPM. Oh my God. That's flames. What a cool trigger. I didn't even know anything like that was in the game. So I'm really learning a lot from looking at this guide. We still have nothing in the level though. This is probably just going to be used as like a junkyard. Next, we have the gameplay chapter, which is going to be awesome to read. Might be very self-explanatory, but I am going to keep to my word and I'm going to go through this entire thing on video all the way to the end of the guide, which is going to take forever, but it's okay, I believe. Thank you once again to Viperin and Autonic for making this. And thank you for watching. Check the links in the description. Leave a like and subscribe and have a good day.